How do I look? <sighs> Amazing. How do I look? Normal. Ugly. Go tell her we're here. You're good with receptionists. Uh -huh. Dwight. Danny Cordray is the worst. Well, by worst, you mean the best. The best salesman ever. He works for Osprey Paper over in Throop, steals more clients from Dunder Mifflin than anyone. So the situation is the worst. Also, he slept with Pam. No, he didn't. We went on a couple of dates. He never called me again. What? He never called you? I thought you said it just fizzled. That's fizzling. I mean, someone has to start the fizzle. Yeah, I thought you started it. No, I liked him. For a couple of days. Four years ago. You know I have a kid with you, right? Ah. I'm gonna intimidate him, okay? Okay, great, watch I'm just this. gonna watch. So anyway, she says, that is the biggest penis I have ever seen. And I said, I know, that's why I brought you to the Penis Museum, where tickets are $1,000. Well, hello, Danny. Hey, Dwight, good to see you. Mm -hmm. Hey, Dwight, good to see you. Okay. What are you doing? Oh, I'm just here for the coffee. <laughs> oh, look how you are. Dwight, he's not just here for the coffee, Jim, wake up. Listen, you gotta get over here because we're pitching Steve Nash and Danny Cordray's here. You need the big guns, yes? Yes. What do you say? What do you say? The big gun thing. Stop. There he is. Oh, no, that's a male model. No, that's him. Okay. Hello. Hi. Michael Scott, Dunder Mifflin Paper Company. Uh, Danny Cordray, Osprey Paper. Nice to meet you. Three of you guys for one sale. We call it overkill. <laughs> Why am I telling you my strategy? Anyway, all right. All right. Good to see you guys. Nice to meet you. Bye. -bye. I could swear that guy was a male model. He's ready for you. Oh, thank you. All right, on the count of three, it's showtime. Ready? One, nope, two. Nope, not doing that. I've been on showtime mode since breakfast. Okay, Are you not? All right, just forget it then. Showtime. It's showtime. Oh, never mind. Let's go. Michael, I'm going with Danny. Oh. How do I feel about losing the sale? It's like if Michael Phelps came out of retirement, jumped in the pool, belly flopped, and drowned. You know who we always lose out to? Staples, the big guys, Osprey? They're a small company. They're smaller than we are. How do we combat this guy? Stanley, how do we combat him? You sell better. Oh, OK. You know what? You clearly don't care, so why don't you just leave? I would like to stay. This pertains to me. Why don't you go outside and take a shot of insulin and have a nap, OK? Why do you always assume I have diabetes? I don't know. Your frame, your build. Why don't you have a glass of apple juice and tell me you're not a diabetic? <laughs> See, I could tell by the sound you made when you stood up that you have, OK. Yes, Phyllis? I could try to seduce him. Oh, my God! I know how we can learn his tricks. Meredith was the perfect choice to play the head of the company. Her lunch break lined up with our appointment with Danny, and that's it. Yeah. Hey, it's my mug. You know this isn't real TV, right? Yes. I'm gonna take off my coat, if you don't mind. It's just a bit warm in here. Hello. Oh, no, no, no. Don't. People can't keep their true natures hidden for long, and this guy is smoldering like a tire fire. Testify. Okay, he's not that good looking. Yeah. I don't understand why everybody's obsessed with this. Good he's very, very oh, handsome. Okay. You're an exec at Pennsylvania Solar Tech. That's he's fake. I mean? told you. You're an exec at Stark Industries, a Will corporation you, you in. Meredith. Oh, I. Uh, Manuel. The... This is Manuel, my cleaning man. He doesn't speak any English. Uh, Manuel Clino El Window. Who else we got? You're a young hotshot from Stark Industries. You've just bought this company. Meredith is fired. It's a whole new regime. He's got a pitch to you now. Okay, Stark Industries isn't real. I run Google. Larry and Sergey brought Great, sounds me in. awesome. Just have him pitch to you. Yeah. This is Esteban, another cleaning man. He doesn't speak English either. Esteban El Floro. Danny. Listen, you have to understand that we are not normally like this. We just, we wanted to know your tricks. We wanted we tricks. There's no tricks, man. I'm just a good salesman. You want to copy that? You can't copy that. You are. You are. You are. You are. Stop it. Stop it. Stop. You are a good salesman. And yeah. because of that, I want you to work for me. Sure. You seem like a fun professional guy. So you will. No. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Your wife and I went on a few dates. Did you? Yeah, way, way, way back. I'm just kidding. She told me about it. Oh, God. <laughs> she was not into me. Oh. Obviously. I don't even think she called me back. You snubbed her. Right, please. Let me handle this, Jim. Drop the act, Cordray. OK? We all know that you probably thought that Pam was too meh or thin without being toned. But I want to tell you something. She is one of the plain, hearty women of Scranton that make this city great. 
And so what if she doesn't wear makeup? We like her better that way. And you steal clients, don't you? Don't you? Okay, that's oh, different. That's isn't different, it? is it? Okay, thief. You better check your things, people. In fact, where are my keys? Oh, they're in my pocket. False alarm. Okay. So you're gonna be working here? Uh, I mean, yeah. Welcome aboard. Stop. Too late. If I was the real Scranton Strangler, you'd be so strangled by now. If you're out there, Strangler, you will get caught by me. Sounds like someone's really trying to convince us that he's not the Scranton Strangler. To my chickens, I'm the Scranton Strangler. Oh, oh that's very funny. Looks like someone decided to dress up as old Dwight Schrute's mom. What? You're only one third as beautiful and about half her height. I am supposed to be olive oil. And it makes more sense when I'm standing next to Popeye, but Jim doesn't want to put his costume on. I am Popeye. I've never really been a costume guy. Even when I was a kid, it just felt like something I was too old for. <laughs> and then this morning, Pam hands me this little number. No. Uh, excuse me, everyone. I want to invite you all to the Halloween party I'm having at my bar. You own a bar? Public school at uh, Exit 11. That's a great name. You're hilarious. Hey, man, can I get a plus five? It's all guys. Hey, what's the crowd like, Danny? Our age? OK, I don't think that she would leave Jim for Danny. I don't know. They're both handsome. Pam is going to choose whoever has a scent most like that of her father. Does anyone remember what her dad smelled like? I think Hey, hey, it... gang, quiet. Here she comes. Did you hear about that Danny guy? Her used to date Pam. Four years ago, when I was in Stanford, Connecticut, and dating someone else, mm -hmm. Pam went on two dates with Danny, which was obviously the greatest love story ever told, given how much people are walking on eggshells around us. We were basically Romeo and Juliet. That's right. Except where Juliet doesn't have that great a time, and Romeo doesn't call back after two dates. Yikes. But I've learned to love again. He's a cartoon sailor. And no. he looks so handsome in his uniform, please. No, no. Tuna, if you want us to skip this party, I don't care. I am never going to forget what Danny did to Pam. I forget nothing. I'm like an elephant in that way. Hey, Danny. Hey. I'm really sorry, but we can't come to your party tonight. I was looking forward to throwing some darts with you guys. OK, yeah, well, then, I mean, maybe we could do it. Like next Halloween? For sure. We're just like totally caught in the middle here. What are you talking about? Well, Jim and Pam basically begged us not to go. Jim and Pam really don't want you to go? They're really upset about the whole Danny situation. I'll talk to them. Yeah, but just what, don't tell them that we said anything to you, okay? Or you're dead. That's crazy. That is crazy. <laughs> we would never care if Andy or Kevin went to your party. Look, I'm just glad we can laugh about it because I was a little nervous about coming to work here with, you know, our history. Oh my gosh, everyone keeps blowing that out of proportion. It's not even a history. Exactly. It's like you guys had some long relationship, right? Two or three dates. It was two. Was it two? I thought it was three. We had plans for a third, but then, I don't know, you never called me back, so. Ooh, <laughs> you can't handle the truth. <laughs> well, that does not sound like me. <laughs> yeah, it was, though. That's what happened. Uh, hey. Hey. This is the same party, huh? When you work hard, you play hard around here. Even if you don't work hard. <laughs> yeah. Oh, here's something. Uh, why didn't you ever call Pam back? <laughs> serious? Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm not saying that everybody has to fall in love or anything. I'm just saying, but to, you know, oh, not even call her back is... You know what it was? I think she gave me her number, but mm. then, like, her fours look like eights and... Could be. But you also called her the second time, so you had the number right. Albert, you looking for someone to bang your wife? I didn't call her back because she spent the whole day talking about you. She was obviously in love with you. I'd remember talking about Jim. That wasn't it. Just tell her the real reason. I didn't call you back because I thought you seemed a little dorky. Hey, man. Thank you. Thank you. I got it. Now I know. You thought I was a little dorky. You know? OK. Well, excuse me. Who doesn't call a dork like that back? Oh! oh.
<laughs> spinach in a can. Power from spinach. I got, 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 got. Aw, my hero. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs>